Hey everyone, welcome to your practice. If you've got a yoga block, you're gonna need that. If you don't have one, don't worry. Um, we're gonna start seated. So you might wanna sit on some cushions, you might want to sit on a block as I am and just get comfortable. If cross legs isn't for you, you can adapt this and sit in any way that's comfy. And a general rule of thumb is that if there's discomfort in the knees or if your knees kind of stay up in the air, that you sit up on something so that your pelvis is a little bit higher up. It will help the comfort and it will just allow you to be here without fidgeting as much as well. Closing your eyes, we'll sit up tall. And just imagine that the back of your skull is almost leaning slightly back. Think about a wall behind you, an imaginary wall, that you're leaning the skull shoulder blades and the lower back on that wall. We're going to begin with some breath work. If you want to put one hand on the belly and one hand up on the chest, then you can. And at first, just see where the breath goes. We'll begin a pattern of breath so you can join in and you can take breaks whenever you want. Next time you inhale, bring that breath into the belly first. So inhale into the belly. Keep inhaling into the chest. Exhale everything out. Long, slow exhale. Inhale into the belly. Inhale into the chest. Exhale everything out nice and slow. We'll keep going. Inhale, belly. Inhale, chest. Exhale out, taking your time. Continue this on. Inhale, belly. Inhale, chest. Exhale out. Inhale belly. Inhale chest. Exhale out. Inhale belly. Inhale chest. Exhale out. Inhale, belly. Inhale, chest. In exhale, out. Inhale, belly. Inhale, chest. Exhale, out. One or two more on your own. Then let the breath return to normal, to a rhythm, a pattern that feels more natural. Let's softly blink the eyes open. Take a few blinks, let the light back in. And you can either stay sitting on your block on your cushions or you can release for this next section. Bring the right hand to the floor next to you and then we'll take the left arm all the way up and over so we can bend that right elbow. Let your head drop towards your shoulder rather than keeping it up or rather than looking up. Just let the head relax. See if you can reach over a little bit more with the left fingers. And as we hold it here, I want you to try to breathe into this left rib cage and puff up, almost as if you're trying to puff up that rib cage towards the ceiling. A couple of breaths whilst we're here, relax the head. Good. 
Let's move over to the opposite side, bring the left hand down, the right hand up and over, and we're really trying to create this big curve in the side of the body. So we're not trying to go super deep, instead we're just trying to puff up, almost like this curve you've created, you're trying to press it up towards the ceiling. Let the head drop. Close your eyes, just take three deep breaths. Every big inhale goes into the right rib cage. And then come all the way back up to center. Let your head drop to your right shoulder. And then take your right hand up and over your head onto your opposite ear. So we're just allowing the hand to press gently down here. The left hand can be on the floor. If you're sat up on cushions or a block, the left hand can be on a block as well. And just allow the weight of your hand to increase the stretch down the side of your neck, just to a place where it feels okay, so nothing too extreme. Leave the head where it is, put the right hand down, and just turn your chin down towards your chest, looking down. Second side, roll that left ear to the left shoulder. Left hand up and over, the weight of the hand presses down gently and feel it. So really focus in on what you're feeling in the side of the neck, the top of the shoulder. Adjust if you need to. And then release, keep the head where it is and then roll the chin back into the center. Let's come to lie down on your back. So your feet can be towards the front of your mat. Coming to lie on your back, this is a slower practice today, but we're still going to awaken the glutes and awaken the core. These are big muscles that if we wake them up at the start of the practice, we're more likely to use them well as we move. So take a block. If you've not got a block, you can use something similar, or I would invest in one of these. They are pretty cheap and they don't need to be anything fancy. They're very, very useful. Bringing the block under your lower back. So you can either have this on the medium setting, which I'm showing now, or you can have it on the lowest setting, but just never on the high setting. And the place where you want the block to be is right above your bum. So some people take the block too high up the back and the bum is like falling off onto the floor. That's not what we want. We want to find the sacrum. So the sacrum is literally just at the top of your bum and it is a flatter fused part of your spine we're going to rest the pelvis on the block it should feel like the full weight of the pelvis can sink into that block behind you and then let your feet be just slightly further away than your knees feet are hip distance and parallel bring the hands down onto the floor and then we're going to just lift off the block ever so slightly. So squeezing your glutes to lift. So it's tempting to just push down into the heels. But instead, imagine the glutes are squeezing up into the air. And you won't actually go much higher. I want you to actually stay really close to the block. So for example, right now, I've engaged my glutes. I've lifted. But I can still feel the block with my skin. There is still a tiny bit of connection there. There's just no weight going through it. And then I'm just going to relax the glutes and they come back onto the block. So we started to get this um, idea that we can really control from the glutes. You can always use your fingers for extra feedback to prod the muscle. This will help it to switch on if it doesn't want to switch on by itself. So again, squeeze the glutes up towards the ceiling and lift just that little bit so that you're still aware that the block is there. There's no weight on it. This time bring your hands onto the front pelvic points. These are the bony parts here at the front. Right hand on the right, left hand on the left. And imagine that you're squeezing your glutes through your body into those hands, but don't lift up any higher. The hands are just there to give a little bit of feedback. You can ever so slightly put some pressure in with the hands. That will help. And then just lower back onto your block. Two more like that. Inhale, squeeze the glutes to lift. Hands on the front of the pelvis. Squeeze the glutes up. This time you can come a little bit higher off your block, but we're not actually looking for any height here. We're keeping a low bridge. The point is that your lower back is lengthening the whole time. So if your lower back sort of curves up too much, lengthen your tailbone towards the heels. 
lower back onto your block. One more time, squeeze those glutes, lift up. Once you feel like you're there and you're secure, bring your hands onto the side of your glutes and just give them a prod at the side. Can you get them to engage any more? The fingertips on the side of the glutes can give you that feedback. Remove your block from underneath you. Lower slowly piece by piece down to the floor. Bring your block in between your thighs. And then we'll lift the legs so that the knees come up above the hip creases. You can always adjust that block if you want to. Interlace your hands behind the head. Elbows are going to squeeze in by your temples. As you inhale, lift up off your shoulder blades and looking down at your abdomen, big exhale and pull the stomach in towards the spine. Inhale, lower back down. We're going to work with our breath here as well. So it's not necessarily too much about how much flesh we've got in the abdomen, it's about what we're engaging. So we're trying to pull the muscles together into the center and then down into your spine. So when we're looking up, we're just looking for that activation. Hands are behind the head. Take a big inhale. As you exhale, lift up. Pull the core into the middle and down into the spine. Hold it here, keep the breath out. Inhale as you lower back down. Exhale, lift up. Pull in and down into the belly, holding that breath out. Inhale, lower back down. Let's do a couple more. Exhale, lift up, draw the core in. The core is your rib cage as well. Draw the rib cage in and down rather than flaring. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift up off the shoulder blades. Hold. Inhale, lower back down. Release your block. Hug your knees to the chest. Just have a few circles here with the knees so that you massage around the rim of the sacrum. And then bring your feet flat on the floor, wiggle the feet further apart, knees point up. Drop both knees to the right and as you do it, keep pushing down into the big toe edge of the left foot. So rather than letting the left knee completely drop, you're still pushing into the side of your foot and it makes the left glute squeeze up. So it feels like the left side is in a bridge, just at an angle and the right side is just opening. You can always put your right hand on the left pelvic point and squeeze the glutes up into that hand like we did before. Keep pushing down with the big toe edge of your left foot and return through the centre. Let the left knee open to the side, the right knee follows, so both knees to the left, but keep pushing into the big toe edge of the right foot. Squeeze the right glutes up off the floor. Left hand can always rest on the right pelvic point. Hold, pressing down in that side of the foot. And then slowly coming back into centre. Hopefully feeling a little bit more integrated, a bit more connected. Bring the knees to the chest. You can rock and roll or any other way that you want to come up into your tabletop. Facing the front of the mat. Knees come underneath the hip creases, hands come underneath the shoulders. And we just take a couple of cat cows here, dropping the belly, lifting the head and the tail as you inhale. And as you exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin to the chest. Really push the hands into the floor. Inhale, coming through into cow. Exhale, rounding back into cat. Let's just take a couple more. And I invite you to move with your breath. Back into neutral, tucking the right toes under, push the right foot back behind you and then let's rock forwards and backwards. So watch your chin, watch your head, keep the head neutral, keep drawing the stomach up, keep drawing the front of the throat slightly up 
and use that back foot. So we're really getting into the sole of the right foot. From here, let's come onto the big toe edge of that right foot. So we sort of turn it to the side, lift the right arm up into a modified side plank. So this will be a little bit wobbly if we keep the shin completely in line. Try to do that. If you need some more support, let your left shin slide out to the left like a stabilizer. Otherwise, keep everything in line. You can look down and if you want to lift the right leg and hover. And as you hover the back leg, we're squeezing the glutes, we're drawing the core in and return to tabletop. One round of cat cow. And then the second side. So we're going to tuck those left toes. Spine is neutral. Push the left leg back behind you. Rock forwards and backwards with the left foot. As you pull the lower belly up, also think about the front of the throat lifting up away from the floor. And then let's turn out to the side. So we start to rock onto the big toe edge of that left foot. Make sure the right wrist is under the shoulder as you lift the left arm up this time. Option to play about with your right shin, not to stay as you are. Option to lift the left leg up, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the core. And then return tabletop position. From tabletop dolphin, we're going to drop the forearms down, interlace the fingers or hands flat on the floor. Lift the hips, come up. Knees are bent, we're on our tiptoes, let's keep it gentle for this first one. Push down to lift higher. So you're pushing down with the forearms to lift the hips up. Hold and breathe, pull the ribcage in. Lower the knees, come down. Stepping to the front of the mat. A couple of rounds of sun salutation, one. Standing up nice and tall near the front. <clears throat> Inhale, lift the arms forwards and up. Exhale, hinge from the hip joint. So sit back in the hip, come all the way down, hands to the floor. Step the right foot back, lower the right knee, lower the top of the right foot, lift up into a low lunge, bring the arms at 90 degrees with both legs. Drag that left foot back towards you. Put the hands down, step back to plank. From plank with or without your knees, lower slowly to the floor, keeping the head of the arm bones lifted. Pull back, low cobra, pulling back with the hands. Exhale, push back, downwards facing dog. Lift the hips. Stepping the right foot forwards, lower the left knee and the top of the foot. Inhale, lift into your low lunge. Arms lift up, ribcage draws in, right foot drags back. Hands down, step together at the front. Inhale, hinge from the hips, lift the arms, come up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, come down. Step the left foot back, lower the knee and the top of the foot. Inhale, lift the arms. Get even taller by lifting the shoulder blades, drag the right foot back, squeeze the left glute. Hands down, step into plank. From plank, with or without your knees, Lower slowly, keeping the head of your shoulder lifted away from the floor. Pull back, low cobra. Exhale, downwards facing dog, push up. Step the left foot forwards. Lower the back knee and the top of the foot, lift up. Reach up, let the shoulder blades lift you even more. Drag the left foot back, right glute switches up. Hands to the front, step the back foot in. Inhale, lift up to standing. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold. Set the right foot back, lower the knee, but not the toes this time. Lift up, 90-90 lunge. This time, release the arms down, and let's draw some circles with your shoulders. Moving backwards, using the shoulder blade. So it's not so much about the elbow being in control, it's all about the shoulder blade being in control, and the arms just move with you. Hands come down, step into plank. Lower with or without your knees to the floor, keeping the head of your shoulder lifted. Pull back, low cobra, really lengthen the spine. Exhale, downwards facing dog, push up. 
step the right foot forwards. Lower the back knee but not the toes, inhale, come up. Same thing, shoulder rolls, use the scapula. Still dragging the right foot back and squeezing that left glute forwards. And then let's step the feet together at the front of the mat, hands come down. Inhale, hinge from the hips, come up to standing. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold. Left foot steps back, lower the knees but not the toes, lift up. Squeeze the right leg back, left glute forwards, shoulder rolls a little bit quicker. Hands come down, step into plank. With or without your knees, lower slowly to the floor. Inhale, pull back, low cobra. Squeeze the glutes. Exhale, downwards facing dog. Step the left foot forwards. Lower the knee but not the toes. Lift up. Draw some circles with your shoulder blades. And then the hands come together at the front. Step the back foot in. Inhale, lift all the way up to standing at the front. Tadasana, release the arms down. Standing at the front of the mat, bring the right hand down by the side. Left hand reaches all the way up by your ear. Lean to your right. So let the right fingers pull towards the floor. Let your head and neck relax towards the right shoulder. Let the left fingers reach over. And then push down more into your left foot. The left sole of the foot pushing into the floor. Come all the way back to centre, left fingers down, right hand reaches up, inhale, exhale, lean to the left. Push into the right foot this time, feel that stretch through the right side of the body, opening up all the way from the right fingers down to the right ankle. And come back up to neutral. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold. Step your right foot back. This time we're not dropping the knee. Stay up high on the ball of the back foot. Bend the back knee and lift up into crescent lunge or high lunge. So the back knee is bent so that we can maintain this neutral pelvis, neutral spine, pulling the stomach in, closing the front of the rib cage, lifting the arms as high as they'll go. And as you lift the arms, we're keeping that ribcage held in, keeping the core held in. Let's just bop up and down with that back knee. So nice and slow. It can be very small. Still squeezing the right glute and pushing into the ball of the right foot. One or two more. Opening out to warrior variation, left arm to the left thigh. Turn the right foot out to the side. And then just like we did in our seated pose at the beginning, push up into that right rib cage. So push higher and higher towards the ceiling. Let the head drop. Big exhale. Come up warrior two. And reverse your warrior just leaning back. Come all the way forwards, warrior two, warrior variation, lean forwards. And we're not going very far. We're trying to keep it lifted towards the ceiling the whole time. Warrior two and reverse. Warrior two and lean forwards. Warrior two, reverse. This time slightly different. Warrior two, lean forward and then we scoop the right arm towards your right foot at the back of the mat. Turn the left toes to the side, come into a side lunge. So we're on our fingertips or blocks or hands flat on the floor. Sit back in the crease of the right hip and just hold it here, lengthening the spine. If it feels okay, the left toes can point towards the ceiling. Otherwise, they can stay down on the ground. Lengthen the spine the whole time. Sit back a little bit more in the crease of the right hip. And then walk your hands towards the front of the mat. Lower the right knee, right hand, just like we did earlier on. Modified side plank, the left leg comes back. Left arm can be lifted or on the pelvis. Hold, find your balance. Come into tabletop. Couple of rounds of cat cow. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the head and the tail. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, back and through. Exhale, round it back. 
Coming into downward facing dog in your own time. From down dog, step or jump to the front. And then inhale, lift to standing. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, lift the arms forward and up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold. Step the left foot back, don't drop the knee. Lift up crescent lunge, left knee is going to be bent to keep that straight spine. And then we bop up and down using that back leg. Holding the core in, holding the rib cage in. A few more bops with the back leg, really squeezing that left glute. And then turn out to the side, warrior variation. Right arm turns onto your right thigh. Left arm reaches up and over, let the head drop. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse, you don't need to go very deep. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, lean forwards, let's keep going. Just with your breath, inhale, lift. Exhale, reverse. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lean forwards. One more time, inhale, lift. Exhale, reverse. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lean forwards and carry the left hand all the way in a big circle round. Towards your left foot, turn the right toes if you want to or lift them up. Lengthen your spine whilst you're here. You can be on blocks, you can be on fingertips. Sit back in the crease of the left hip. You can always put the fingers there and push back. Lengthening the spine. Hold it here. Walking your hands over to the front of the mat. Left hand down, left knee down, right leg back, either on the floor or in the air. Right arm can lift, the head can drop, or the right hand can be on your pelvis. Just find your balance. And tabletop, bring both knees in. A couple of rounds of cat cow. Downwards facing dog when you're ready. From down dog, walk, step or jump, the feet together at the top. Bending the knees, inhale, lift the arms all the way up to standing and release the hands down. Let's add on a little bit from the flow that we've created. Bring the right hand down by the side, lift the left arm up by the ear, lean to the right, find your side stretch, push into the left foot, get more length in the left side body. Inhale, come back to centre, swap the hands. Inhale, get taller. Exhale, lean to the left, right fingertips up and over. Push into the right foot. Come back up to the centre. Tadasana, release both hands down. Inhale, lift the arms forward and up. Exhale, hinge from the hip joint, come all the way down. Step the right foot back, crescent lunge, lift up. Bending that right knee and bopping up and down a few times. And find your breath with this movement to work the two things together. Left arm to left thigh, right foot turns out, warrior variation. Reach up, warrior two, and reverse your warrior. This time if you want to, add in half moon. So we come forwards, if you want the left hand to the floor, the right leg lift. And then the right foot lowers, we come up through warrior two into our reverse warrior. So just an option, a little bit more energising. Up to you. If you want to come to half moon. Or if you want to keep it as warrior variation, just carry it up with your breath. And then the next time you lean forward, just stay with warrior variation. Turn that right arm in a couple of big circles. Like you're doing front crawl, so it's going forwards, up by your ear, out in front of you, down by the side to your hip. One more. This time the right hand comes all the way to the right foot at the back, sit back in the crease of the right hip. And then we shift this now side to side, so shift to the left hip and then the right hip. Lengthening the spine the whole time. Sit back into the creases of your hips. Draw the core in to protect the spine. 
Okay, start to walk your hands to the front of the mat. Let the right knee drop under the hip crease, right wrist under the right shoulder. And if you want this time, the left hand takes hold of the left foot. And we find a quad stretch in our modified side plank. You can always take the right shin slightly out to the right if you need more support. As you take this quad stretch, avoid the back bend. So squeeze the glutes and pull the stomach in. Think about trying to get a really neutral lower back. Big inhale. Ah, big exhale, that is a good stretch. Come into your cat cows and allow this freedom. If you prefer, you could take a couple of barrel rolls with the spine. Just let the body move. Downward facing dog. Walk, step or jump to the front. And then come all the way up to standing with that straight spine. Tadasana at the front, second side. Left hand stays down this time, right hand lifts. Lean to the right first, push into the right foot, lengthen the side body. Try and keep everything neutral, even though we're leaning to the side. Come back up. Right hand down, left hand up, lean to the side. Try to keep a neutral pelvis, lengthen the spine. Come back up to centre, Tadasana. Inhale, lift the arms forwards and up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, fold. Step the left foot back, come up into your crescent lunge, lifting the arms, and we bop up and down with the back leg. So if you could see your body from the side, what we'd be trying to look at is a really straight line from your pelvis to your fingertips. Try to create a really straight line and just using the back leg and the front leg a little bit too, but mostly the back to bop up and down. Turn the back foot out 90 degrees, right elbow to right thigh. Warrior variation, drop the head. Inhale, warrior two, exhale, reverse your warrior. Let the head drop. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, lean forwards. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse. We can add that half moon if you want to. So the next time you come forwards, just do all this in your own time. If you want, the right hand comes to the floor, the left leg lifts. Left hand can be on the pelvis or in the air. And then with control, you bend the right knee, lower the left foot to the floor, warrior two, and into your reverse warrior. Carry on with whichever variation you want. Next time that you lean forwards, stay there in your warrior variation. And just let's take these front crawl arms with the left arm. So big circle forwards up by the ear, down towards the floor. Let the head relax. Next time you draw the circle, just let the left hand go all the way to the left foot as you turn the right toes and we're gonna side lunge, left to right, left, right. Sit back in the crease of the hips, keep a long spine. So the knees are bent, but we're really trying to sit backwards rather than jut them too far forwards. And then turn your body to face the front of the mat. Left knee down, underneath the hip, left hand down. You can take hold of the right foot with the right hand if you want to find that quad stretch. And in that quad stretch, draw the stomach in, squeeze the glutes forwards. Tailbone down towards the back of your mat or towards your left heel. Really nice stretch. If you've got a lot of tightness in the quads, this feels really good. Release, tabletop, hands under the shoulders, inhale. A couple of cat cows, let them be free. Barrel roll if you prefer. And then let's come into a child's pose. Hips to heels, hands come forwards, drop the head. child's pose lift your head we're going to find just a really nice 
stretch for the shoulders here. I want you to slide your hands further forward so that your hips lift a little bit. So there is a pose called um, Anahatasana or heart melting pose or puppy pose. It's not that, it's slightly different, but it looks similar. Hands are on the mat and then you're gonna pull the hips backwards. So if they touch your heels, you need to walk your knees back a little bit more. So we're gonna pull the hips back, hands are on the mat, drop the head and find this line of resistance. So we're trying to create a straight line. We're not letting the head or the shoulders drop towards the floor. We're just pulling the creases of the hips backwards. You can always adjust even more if you need to. And it should feel like you're almost dragging your hands backwards along the mat. Avoid sinking towards the floor, lifting away from the floor instead. And then drag it all the way back into your child's pose. From child's pose, bring yourself up to kneeling or seated. Bring the legs out, come to lie down on your back. Lying on your back, just let the back of the skull feel heavy on the floor. Shoulder blades, lower back. Knees point to the ceiling, bring your right foot to your left knee. So the right ankle to left knee. Bring your hands onto the pelvis point. And then draw your right knee just a tiny bit away from you. So if you draw the right knee too far, the pelvis will tip and you'll feel it underneath your hands. You'll feel that the right pelvic point has moved down and the left one has moved up. So we're not really looking to open the knee loads, just a little bit. Keep those pelvic points in line. Right knee opens a tiny bit. Hold it here. And then imagine the right thigh is dragging to the right side left thigh is dragging to the left side. Give yourself that little bit of resistance between the two legs. Keeping a neutral pelvis. Close your eyes, we'll take a few deep breaths here. You can find that level of traction that feels good for you as it feels like you're pulling the right thigh right, left thigh left. Swap your legs. You can keep the hands on the pelvis if you want to really try to not move the pelvis. Left ankle to right knee. It can open a tiny bit, but not at the expense of tipping the pelvis. So that's why the hands can really help us here. And then left thigh pulls left, right thigh pulls right. Tailbone is long towards the right heel. Close your eyes, a few deep breaths. And then release the left leg down. Slowly extend the legs into Shavasana. If you prefer, you can keep the knees pointing up to the ceiling. You can let the knees just drop or knock in together. Hands come down by the side, palms are up. Give yourself the permission to be still. Just for a very short Shavasana today. take a big stretch. Your eyes can stay closed, the arms come to the sides or overhead, whichever feels best for the shoulders. Lengthening the back of the neck, lengthening the tailbone down. Draw one knee up into the chest and then the other knee can follow. Pause here for a little rock side to side and bring yourself up to seated. You can just push your way up with a hand or you can rock however you want to get there. We're sitting just for 10 seconds or so. 
You can sit on something if you want, or just sit in a way that's comfortable. Sit tall, draw the skull slightly back as if you're sat against the wall. Bring your hands to prayer. One big deep breath to end, big inhale through the nose, huge sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> Thank you for joining me. Namaste.